Madam President, Your Excellency, members of the Security Council, thank you for inviting me today to speak for and prioritizing the voices of civil society and survival of war crime. I am here today to speak to you about the political situation in Syria, to shed light on grave human rights violations that you are aware of due to the incredible effort of brave Syrian men and women who documented this violation and briefed this council and other international bodies time and time again. In response to this incredible effort, you have afforded war criminals impunity. With many countries now normalization relations with the Syrian regime, warmly welcoming Bashar al-Assad, the main perpetrator of war crimes and the man who turned Syria into a narco state back to the diplomatic stage. I have witnessed and survived many of these violations. I survived a mustard gas attack on Harasta and witnessed the Syrian regime chemical weapon massacre on Ghouta in 2013. I lived under the regime siege of Ghouta, completely cut off from all services at the time when obtaining even a loaf of bread was a battle. Starvation and dire economic condition were the main features of that period. The regime intentionally crushed that area with no regard to the lives of people living there. It's no wonder that the same regime does not care that 90% of Syrians today are living under the poverty line. These conditions have fueled brave men and women who are taking to the street demanding change. I understand very well their pain and admire the courage to protest today under the very real risk of death, detention, torture, and disappearance. Through the last 12 years, 100,000 people have been detained or forcibly disappeared, the majority at the hand of the Syrian regime. But ISIS and other armed forces have also used that practices as a weapon of war. Those detained are subjected to torture, rape, denial of food, health services and visits. Thousands have been killed. Families of the disappeared are waiting in anguish for any news about their missing loved ones, not knowing if they are alive or dead. The newly established UN institution to reveal the fate of the missing person is a positive step the result of the effort led by brave women. It's now your duty to ensure the collaboration of the Syrian regime with this humanitarian mechanism to reveal the fate of all missing in Syria. Madam President, members of the Council, today I am a refugee in France. I wish I could go back to Syria and stand with the brave men and women protesting in Sweda, Jaramana, Tartus, and other area. But I can't, because I know that returning to Syria means I will end up detained, tortured, or killed. Today, Syrian refugees in Turkey and Lebanon fear for their lives, as both countries escalate deportation of refugees to Syria putting them at risk of grave human rights violation in violation of state commitments under international law. As member of the Security Council, it is your duty to pressure host countries to protect refugees. My country is not safe. The condition for dignified, safe, voluntary return for refugees do not exist right now member of Security Council. There are many efforts by the international community, including this council, to secure humanitarian aid 
cross-border access, documenting war crimes, and more. While this effort is important, you are working on the symptoms while the root causes of the Syrian crisis are still there. There, one way out of it, a real political process that meet the demands of the Syrians and lead to the political transition. The UN-backed Constitutional Committee has failed to produce any tangible outcome, largely due the int intentional and systematic disruption by the Syrian regime and fading international support and commitment. The political and the peace process cannot and should not be reduced to mere constitutional debates. Accountability and justice are an essential step to any peace agreement. As a human rights defender and a feminist, I demand accountabilities for all perpetrators of a human rights violation and for any crimes committed by all parties of the conflict. Political process must prioritize the release of all detainees. We need to activate a wider political process, ensuring a, political, a political transition at the center within a clear timeline. This cannot happen without a strong international commitment to the process that counter the dominance of the Syrian regime's allies, namely Russia and Iran, over the future of Syria. Additionally, any political process must ensure participa participation of Syrian of all components and geographic location, including civil society, survivors, and survivor-led groups. Women's participation must not be a box-checking exercise for the special envoy. An inclusive approach is of utmost importance it's not enough to consult the Syrian women. Our full, equal, and meaningful participation in decision-making and policy formation must be ensured. Members of the Security Councils, 12 years ago, the streets of Syria were filled with hope for change. We were part of a revolution demanding democracy, dignity, and freedom and we were met with terrible brutality and abandoned by the international community. But despite all of this, Syrians still demand change. Syrians are showing unbelievable courage, and I am inspired by them to speak out today. Right now, as I speak to you, Syrians are in the street protesting saying the same word we said 12 years ago. It's time for Assad to leave. So we can have chance to build a new country based on freedom, equality, and democracy. Members of the Security Council, it's your turn now to show us courage. Thank you very much.